We're more excited than ever about some of the major changes in trend. You know, markets will trend for a long time. You don't always get to stare a, a major turn in the face, but we've seen a couple recently, and they've been a lot of fun. Of course, we had real estate top back in 05, and we had the stock market top last year. And um, last time we talked, uh, we took a good hard look at the silver market. That was on March 19th when we were together. Um, and the 14th, which is the previous Friday, we showed this picture, which was uh, a nice trend line where prices had met it. It looked like it needed one small wave up. We got that Monday morning on the 17th to finish the silver rally at a price of $21 plus, which we worked out a couple of years ago as well. And at the same time, we had an unbelievable reading about a week and a half before that high of 98% bulls. I don't believe there's ever been a higher reading in the DSI, the Daily Sentiment Index. It's a great combination. Um, the next chart shows you what happens, has happened since. In only eight weeks, silver has dropped 25%. Uh, That's quite a drop. Gold, in the same time, has dropped 20%. I think these turns are, are important, and I think they're real. I don't think they're just pullbacks in a bull market, and there's some good reasons for that. Tell us what those good reasons are, Bob, because if we take a look at the charts, at least uh, from a layman's perspective, you see those three peaks. Those three peaks make a wave, and now we're going to be looking at a sell-off in the, the energy complexes, specifically in crude? Well, that's the way we're reading this chart. It's a very nice Elliott wave. You tend to get three movements upward separated by two corrections. We think that's what we have here. Uh, I think most people would look at it and say, well, why not just pull back and go to a new high? We've, we've had the five waves. We've hit the trend line again. We had the extreme exuberance. Um, so I think this pullback is real. There's another subtle thing going on very long term. Most people are very focused on the short term. We always like to get the very long picture. As you know, back in January of 1980, I be believe it was on the 21st of that month, uh, gold and silver had their all-time highs, their initial all-time highs, gold at 850, silver at $50. Well, this time around, gold made a new all-time high going above 1,000, but silver peaked well below its $50 previous all-time high. Now, I think that's a very important non-confirmation indicating that there was more interest and excitement in one of those metals than the other, very much different from what happened in 1980. So I think that's a long-term indication that we have a top. Now, we also follow cycles, and I've been saying for quite a while that the gold and silver cycles next to the bottom around 2012. Now, that's four more years from now. That's a long time for prices to go down. So I think this turn is real. And as you've been pointing out, I think it's got implications for some of the other uh, big, bulled up commodities. And the one that's hot right now is oil. And I think we're probably days away from a pretty important turn there as well. When you talk about days away from a pretty important turn, tell us, Bob, is that, uh, is that because of price issues? Is that because of supply and demand issues? What are you seeing? What's the catalyst for that change? Well, two things, really. Uh, just as we saw in the silver market two months ago and the gold market as well, we've got two things going on in oil. Uh, one is what looks like a completed Elliott wave pattern. I mean, people hardly use waves these days, but we still do, and, and they work when, when people are emotional. For example, in 2006, in July, I published a, a very long, I think it was about a 14-page report on oil. And we caught, caught the top there at $80. It went down to $50. That was a pretty hefty correction. That was the peak of wave three. No, and Bob, just to, to let you know, we were showing people a chart of price declines of some of the commodities that have really run up previously. We're just looking from March, and we're seeing the price declines for wheat, for sugar, for coffee. Uh, tell us a little bit more about your uh, estimates for oil. Are we all set for a big decline in oil? Is there going to be a mirror situation for what went on in silver and gold? Well, that's a great, great setup for the discussion of oil because there tend, you know, people sometimes think, well, if there's inflation or deflationary expectations that all the market should peak or bottom at the same time. But that's not the way things work. You know, people switch their speculation focus from one thing to another. So, yeah, they've, they've done the round robin. They've gone through the precious metals. They've gone through the agriculturals. And, of course, oil's been the big one. That's the one everybody wrote so many books about in 2006. Now we're running out of oil. And 2006, as we were saying before, that was the peak of the third primary wave. Uh, we had a big correction down to 50, actually just under $50 a barrel. So now oil is soaring again. It's more than doubled. This, to me, is the frenzy phase. It's probably very much like those first couple weeks in March when the metals were flying and everybody said that's the only place to be. So we think if you're selling into this, you'll probably feel pretty good about a year from now. 
I'm not going to try to pinpoint it any more closely than that. Okay, that's fair enough, Bob. Let me ask you, when you talk about selling into the situation, tell us what your work is uh, giving you a view of in terms of the general stock market. Should people be selling into these uh, rallies when we do get them? Well, uh, let's show a picture of the stock market. And, you know, I wasn't even thinking of covering this uh, when we knew last week we were coming on the show. But, but suddenly yesterday, everything began to fall into place. And, and the chart we're looking at now, we actually did for you yesterday uh, before today's big down day. And looking at the internal uh, statistics in the stock market in the past two months is extremely revealing. For one thing we can see here, the stock market went down from October into March and the S&P, it's spent two months now kind of rallying and moving back upward. All right, I'm just well, telling people, what? Bob, that that's the blue line that they're seeing, the light blue line, the S&P 500, that's at the very top of the graph. Go ahead, I beg right, your pardon. That's, that, no, that's fine, that's the top line. Now, take a look at this middle line. This is fascinating. You see the arrow pointing downward while the market was going upward? That is, an, is a line that, that connects the tops of the peak advanced decline readings per day. So the, when we kicked off from the bottom, you had about a 9 to 1 ratio in advances to declines on the New York Stock Exchange. So the next time there was a big update, it was about 4.5, 5 to 1. And then a little later on in the rally, the best day they could muster was about 2 to 1. In the last few days, the best it has done is just a little more than you know, break even. This is, a, this is a market that's running out of steam on the upside. Now throw in the bottom uh, graph, and you're looking at volume. Volume went up during the decline into January, went up again in the decline in March. This time during the rally, it's going down and down and down. So that tells me that the fuel is also running out on this thing. So you've got a combination of, uh, of events, and I just want to uh, reiterate if we can take a look at that chart again, because it is a little bit uh, difficult uh, on the monitors to, uh, to make the, the distinction between them. But if we take a look, the blue line there is the S&P 500, and you're seeing this weak rally as you're describing it. Then the uh, yellow line, the advanced decline line, looking at the uh, number of stocks gaining versus the number of stocks uh, falling. And we're seeing that also trend down. And then as you find describe the volume number turning down. Uh, it, without this kind of fuel, Bob, what do you think we could be looking at in terms of support? Or what happens? Is this a slow bleed on the market? Or, you know, what is it, the death by a thousand paper cuts? Or is it really just something that falls off like what we saw with silver and gold? I think what we've been having is sort of death by a hundred cuts for the shorts. You know, they've been sort of trying to get out of the market during this rally. But guess what? We've come right up to the 50 to 60 percent retracement level from the October drop. Uh, we've also met a trend line that goes all the way back to 1982, which is now resistance. So many things are in place. I'd love to show you the long-term pictures as well. If any of your viewers want to see that, uh, just tell them to go to elliotwave.com slash Dow, D-O-W, and they can you know, look at a lot more than we can get through today. But if you add all these together, I think the next move is not uh, a thousand cuts. It's going to be a very big slice. It's going to be a larger version of what we saw from October down to the March low. And if it's going to test that March low, uh, let me ask you, Bob, where do you see the most, uh, the most profits potentially being made? Is it just shorting equities, or are there some asset classes that have yet to display the upward characteristics that you've described? Well, just as so many markets have been uh, you know, moving together on the upside for a number of years, I think we're now slowly morphing into that time. It started really in, in 05. Well, you can go back to 2000 or even 1999 if you look at the real value of stocks, for example. But we've been slowly making this top process. And as soon as the last couple of commodities, such as oil, finally turned down, I think we're going to have a situation uh, very much like 2003 to 2005 in reverse, where all of the markets, the commodities, the stock indexes, uh, and real estate, all of the standard investments will be going down and a lot of debt will disappear on the margin, and that means the remaining dollars that people have will be gaining purchasing power throughout the financial system. That, to sum up in one word, is going to be a period of deflation. A deflationary period. Then uh, yeah. do you see the Federal Reserve, and we talked about it briefly, do you see the Federal Reserve being able to act upon that situation? Well, the Fed has been acting, and, and quite aggressively, as everyone knows, but of course they do have a limited... Uh, amount of resources. They've already pledged over half of them, uh, $430 uh, billion, uh, to buy up lesser quality uh, instruments. I don't think that's a very good idea. 
as several people have pointed out, they're really lessening the quality of their balance sheet, they're probably willing to pledge the rest of it, and maybe they can conjure up some more by buying more Treasury bonds. But they're, um, they're taking a big risk. All right. Well, we've, we've run out of uh, risk. Uh, we were closing up on a commercial. Thank you very much, Robert Prechter, president of Elliott Wave International.